Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Larry Bjork. I'm chair of the committee, county board supervisor for District 26, which is over in the Upon area to the um, to the north. And to the west is the Eau Claire County line, and big part of the uh, of the town of Springbrook. So um, I'm ex dairy farmer and an ex Walmart truck driver and learning, been on the county board since five or six years. And happened to be lucky enough to be on Chris's committee to help and human services for the first two terms. And uh, I was just, before we get into calling the meeting to order, uh, I want to just read here to remind everybody our vision statement. I think this says it very well for Dunn County Aging and Disability Resource. We are the leadership that advocates for health, safety, and welfare of Dunn County. So that's a big charge, and uh, I uh, know that we've got great people doing great things. Um, I got to—I got to tell you one thing. I shouldn't have to tell you. I—I—I. I, 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 I have eight cows, and I got one cow that's 13 years old, and we've been waiting for her to have her calf, and she got a dead calf. <laughs> and I've done it forever. So we had to feed her to feed the calf. That's a cow. So just think how important your work is. So, okay. Enough of that, Larry. Yes. <laughs> and it's air conditioned. Here. Um, call the meeting to order here at Dunn County Aging Disability Resource Center. Uh, we'll do the ro ro uh, roll. Uh, Maybe people could just introduce themselves as they go around the room. Would that be the best? Because we see a lot of faces, I hope, and don't know. So, and if, with Chris. Uh, yeah, and if you wouldn't mind reading, sharing just a little bit so Paula can kind of connect something that's important to you, either ADRC or otherwise, really, if that would probably be helpful. So, I'm Chris Corporal. This is, I'm the uh, so I say I'm the human services director, but Paul is the human services director. So you get two, two, two. Uh, you're so lucky today. Um, but I, um, this is my, this will be my last meeting with you. Uh, I was slated to retire uh, in August, and then the opportunity arose to sort of step into the role of the uh, county manager here for Dunn County. So. Retirement went on hold for a while, and uh, that will be subject to county board approval at the end of the month. And then uh, all of that, if all of that transpires as anticipated, then I'll take over that role on July 30th. And uh, Paula will be fully has been here with me since just after the Fourth of July. So, and I'll let her tell you about herself. Sure. I'm Paula Winter, and as Chris said, I started on the beginning of July in Dunn County. I um, previously was in Pepin County as the director there of human services for the last nine and a half years. And then prior to that, I was the director for Buffalo Health and Human Services um, for six years, five, six years. And then I was the manager in the Children and Families Unit, social worker before that, all of those kinds of good things. I helped to develop in Pepin County um, and in Buffalo County in those roles. I helped to develop the Joint integrated ADRC um, for those two counties. And prior to that, we actually were with Clark County, so I uh, worked with them as well. So, with that, so um, lots of experience as you can tell um, in both ADRC human service world. A um, little about, a bit about me personally. I live in a player married to Larry, um, who's a retired um, human services director from Chippewa County. So, kind of all in the family here, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, three adult daughters, two that live around here, and one in the state of Arkansas, married and down there in the um, grand 
that's on the on there. Um, I thank you, Larry, for your great introduction. Um, your intro and passion is exactly who I am as well. Um, I'm a teacher once in a while because I'm very passionate about um, people caring about communities and the work that we do. So um, thank you for giving me permission to be vulnerable as well. I appreciate that. A little bit about me. Okay, and I'm Charlotte Lee, and I just came from the Under Teachers <laughs> <laughs> And I got the great code, but I had to miss the, the program, which was uh, about dogs. Did you mean to connect it? Oh, helping dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the retired teacher was in White Bear Lake. Uh, South Grass, quite. Mm -hmm. There it is, South Grass. <laughs> All our children are South Grass. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm Marty Hageman, and um, I, um, I've had a lot of work in social work. I'm a social I was a social Before I retired, I was a social worker. I worked as a benefit specialist for the county for Dunn County for a number of years. And uh, and then was working as the director of the Alzheimer's Association for a number of years before um, before I retired, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> so um, I um, I am involved as a volunteer and with um, CBLR uh, Chippewa Valley Learning and Retirement. I mean, I've been on the board and I don't also organize classes for that. And uh, so I and and I'm also a support group leader, a volunteer support group leader with. Uh, for um, for families working with dementia, so I'm um, <laughs> I'm Sherry Holmesdad. Um, I work at the Family Center. I'm past director, retired, and well, that's why I keep coming back. That's why I got married. Have two grown children. Uh, Oh, for me. <laughs> My name is Carol Kuhler, and Gloria, our community is really a lot. I think we have a very fun and help to get in as well. Right. Sometimes. I want you to put my light on. Sometimes it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, was born and raised here, went out to college, uh, lived most of my adult life in Colorado, and a very career. Uh, one of the uh, places I worked for was the Colorado Week, which was a creative committee of the economists. And um, I ran a surgeon's office in Denver. Once I moved back here, a couple of, uh, well, first of all, I did teach at Cal. That's where I got my master's in social science. Mm -hmm. and got my PhD at Fort Collins in Colorado State University. And a lot of my research was on the glass ceiling. That's uh, one of my things. And um, also with the executive director of this was when we were having lots of problems with that organization, I am sort of on the board and uh, helped get it up and running again. I have three children, uh, three grandchildren. Uh, all of my grandchildren are mixed race, just a little bit of the area where I've done a lot of studying. Um, and my claim to fame here in Menominee is. I have a son who was buying the pavilion and helped build uh, uh, with the farmer's market. Uh, that yeah, pavilion? That big pavilion. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. that's my, yeah. uh, my name is Casey Rumsas, and I am the caregiver coordinator in the EFC. I won't say too much about what I do since I will be coming out later. <laughs> I started here about a year ago and um, I'm slowly working through getting myself out of the community. Not to say since I'm here to talk about I'm Tracy Fisher. I'm the ADRC manager here in Dunn County. I'm relatively new to the position. I started in November of last year. Prior to that, I've been with the colony. Um, for 13 years now, I was the social services director at the Neighbors, the nursing home. 
Um, I married, I have two sons, and I'm very happy to hear all the positive stuff about Stout, because my oldest son is going to Stout, he just graduated um, in computer science this fall, which also does my mama's heart good, because I can sneak over and maybe see him at lunchtime or something a few times, although he has been very clear that he's going to have some strong boundaries, so, uh, and my youngest son it will be a sophomore in high school this year. Um, we have a lot of pets that folks know about. We have two dogs, two gold or three dogs. One of them, I, one I don't consider a dog. She's more of a person. I have two golden retrievers, Bailey and Nora, who are our regular dogs. Then I have Annie, a tiny five pound Maltese, who is the boss of all the pets. Um, and she's more like a person. And then we have a cat named Richard, which everyone thinks is funny because <laughs> kind of a formal name for a cat. But he, if you met him, you would understand he's definitely a Richard. <laughs> so that's a little bit about me, and thank you guys all for coming. I'm Chris Olson. I've been broken in the with the Colbacks with Hudson and back here now. Um, sort of following my dad's footsteps. My dad was a uh, advocate for veterans, and there's a 20 year disparity between me and my brother, and he's uh, close to 30, 30 years in the city now. And uh, just trying to work out some gray areas between male and female because they just don't do it. And, uh, one of my passions, I also the sound tech and uh, put the living home guard band and do video calls. Maybe. Male. Male. Hospital. I've talked to somebody from Portugal, I've talked to somebody from Florida. No, as far as how they uh, currently how they treat the patients, because the, my brother um, has some respiratory issues, and they said, "Well, we'll see if uh, August twentieth that you're still around." Oh. And, Within when I was in the 90s, um, I was involved in some craft projects for uh, giving, giving crafts to, to the nursing home for the year. And then I was in the past to be a community representative. Hi, I'm Suzanne Gaines. Uh, don't live in Menominee. I'm up in Northwestern Dunn County. Also, very far in And um, so nice to have them ride back in and see people in person again. Yeah. <laughs> Although I seem to be almost the only person in the is still going on. <laughs> I do. Um, I do. <laughs> uh, let's see. Sociologist by academic training and by profession. Uh, staff for a lot of advisory committees for a long time, kind of in town, but in the next council. But um, we're really glad to have an opportunity to serve both here and on the uh, Menominee Public Library Board. Um, I'm Maria Budkowski, and I'm um, born and raised in Pennsylvania, but I've actually lived in Wisconsin now for longer than I had as a, as a Pennsylvanian. Love, love Wisconsin. Uh, it's, a, it's a great state, a uh, progressive state. And um, so um, married, uh, have two children. Our younger son, who is now 38 years old, um, has autism. And um, my degree was in psychology. Don't know if that was helpful or not, but he is a wonderful guy. Um, and we just get so much from having him still in our lives, but he is very much in our lives. He does live on his own in Eau Claire, but with support from um, a social service agency during the day. And so there's still a lot of oversight that's involved. And it was through community supported living. And so the parents or the caregivers are often still very much involved. So I'm happily retired because I had worked for 25 years um, at, with um, Ed Stout, 
uh, as a dining service manager. And when you work as a dining service manager, you work 60 hour to 70 hour weeks all the time. <laughs> and um, it, it, especially as our son transitioned from a group home into a community supported living situation, it just became way too difficult to try to manage both of those things. And my health was really being compromised as well as a result. And so um, happily retired uh, since 2014. And um, I had worked with Bob at Tunnehill um, and uh, we both worked together as managers in dining service. She left to come to work for Dunn County. And then after she retired, or after I retired, I started working with her at, um, for the Meals on Wheels program. And love that it's another food program and so really enjoy it. I think it's doing wonderfully well now on the neighbors and um, it's being managed really well and it absolutely serves the need. Um, and I do really enjoy driving for Meals on Wheels as well. And um, I am the president of ARC of Dunn County and um, am volunteering with, they now have a community garden site and so, yeah, the community garden is a great place, but oh my gosh, it takes a lot of work to keep things alive at the community <laughs> garden. <laughs> but it's a beautiful place, and I really, really enjoy being there and really enjoy having the, the kids that are involved in the day programming through ARC be able to participate and get outside, and supervise me, and keep the plants watered. And so... It's, it's been fun. I'm pretty boring compared to that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Leanne Bart. Um, I worked for the county for almost 26 years in home care. And then the budget came in both our departments in 2019. So then I retired. Um, my husband, Matt, at the age of 54, was diagnosed with early onset dementia. I lost him nine years ago. So I'm very involved with the Alzheimer's walks out of the Richmond area. Um, I serve on the committee there. I help with memory care, cafe with Casey, and then um, partake in this, which is a good way to um, I have two adult children, daughter and a son, great kids, so very lucky. My sister-in-law works at Pepin County. Marie Bartz, Richard. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I guess if there was, uh, if there was a good example about, uh, how people could come together and sit in a room like we are today instead of, you know, looking at the screen and all of that. You know, and I really do still think it's risky to be out and about. So I commend you all for uh, being out and about. And, uh, you know, uh, County Board wrestles with a lot of things. And one of the things that wrestles with is economic development. And we have spent a lot of money trying to get things done, making you know, get jobs available and things like that. But there's another part of the county that uh, and we don't, you know, believe me, I don't think we do well with economic development and money we spend. So that's just me. But, you know, having done county being a great place to live and a great place to work, you know, uh, what we do here in this committee and the services that we offer people, I would think would be uh, more important than having another uh, 50 acres covered with concrete just to have somebody move in and, and give a job. And it, you mentioned the, the home health care. Uh, and that was a real shocker to me that the, the county would not support that because um, you know, you, the vulnerable people that we have in the county, we really, you know, they have supported Dunn County for a long time, and we need to support them. 
when they need it the most. And I read the vision statement and it just really bothered me because it's that what this committee and other committees should do in health and human services. Uh, we, we, we spend a lot of money in a lot of different areas, but we need, there are people that need the help and need to be taken care of. Uh, and I'm glad we're able to do it this last time. Okay, so that's it. Uh, anybody get a chance to read the minutes from May 6th? I take a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I make that motion. Motion, is there a second? Second. Uh, any other discussion on the motion from minutes? Uh, we'll just call, all, signify by saying aye uh, or uh, approve the minutes. Aye. 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 Any uh, those? Okay, the motion passed, the minutes have been approved. Been approved for the Okay, Chris, do we have public comment from anybody on the webs or anything else? Um, I have nothing. What, Tracy, did you and Marty decide, Marty, did you have anything public comment or did you find a different way to? I think um, what will Marty, unless Marty, you want to just bring up the, the date of that meeting but yeah. in September because it's before our next meeting, I think right. you mentioned. Yes. Um, just a, well, one of the things that I think we as a group we're working with energy issues. And uh, as I mentioned in, in the introduction, I'm involved with Chippewa Valley Women in Retirement. And this is a private, I mean, it's a, it's a nonprofit group that is, you have to join to be, go to the classes. But um, um, but it's $30 for the whole year. And you know, this is an example of one semester of the classes that are offered. And I'm offering, um, I'm going to be, oh, and registration to join Chippewa Valley uh, Earning and Retirement is August 24th at the Rossback Museum. So if anyone is interested in that, but one of the classes that I'm going to have, I'm having Dr. Um, uh, a Dr. Marks from, um, from Madison is coming here to do a program on a privatization of Medicare, what's happening with it, and the direction that Medicare is going. Um, and it's going to be, the program is going to be on September 14th at the Senior Center at the uh, Rosbeck Museum. And even though uh, it's for members only, I'm going to be, since I'm in charge of it, I'm going to kind of let people come. <laughs> I, I, I just think that it's important enough that that I'm going to try to kind of let people in the door. <laughs> so um, I just think it might be something in, in um, basically Medicare is is moving toward for profit managers managing Medicare, and I think we all need to understand it. Uh, we can have our own opinions and we can and it's, um, about it, and um, but to understand what's happening um, before. Because what it does is Medicare's going to run out of money faster. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, that's the issue. And if you want to come to that program on September 14th at the Last Beck Museum at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, or 1, 1 30 in the afternoon, um, I'll let you in the room. <laughs> it's also going to be uh, one of presented balls. So anyway, if you you probably want to find out if you don't know about it, about the pro kinds of programs that are up there. And uh, it, there's about 800 people in Eau Claire, Chippewa, and Dunn County that are members of this. Uh, okay, that's all. Great. Anybody else? Comments? Okay, well, and then let's look at item uh, five, the upcoming meeting date, September 19th. Wow. That sounds like almost the beginning of the year, <laughs> September 19th. And that will be a dual, the um, Nutrition Advisory Council okay. at one o'clock, ADRC Advisory at one thirty-ish. Yeah. I was glad to hear the comments from 
Ever dedicated people that come to this says, My library in Colfax, my library in Madonna, my sanctuary, you know, is open to people and um, talk, to, you know, they're, they're there to provide services for you know, at other degrees. You know, uh, if you're a new person to Colfax or Sanctuary or, or even Monotony, you know, uh, heading down to the library is a good place to see them. Where you have landed up at. Mm -hmm. so, okay. God, I've got so much stuff in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, staff, staff report. Oh, new director. So. I think it's just an introduction. <laughs> I did that already. You did that already. Is there anything else you want to know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I suggested that when she comes to Old Clare, she can drive by my farm is. And there's any black cows out on the road there, just to get in Dodge County. They're probably mine. <laughs> <laughs> haven't, haven't, haven't had any get outs lately, but every once in a while, somebody drives it and the dogs say, Here they are. And my wife says, I think you're a cow. Lucky they have. So welcome, Paul. I'm going to tell you, you, you've got a great bunch of people to work with, and uh, lucky to have you. Okay, caregiver coordinator program. Who's going to do that? Take the year. Yes. Yeah. And I brought some. First of all, I'll just give you one thing. I think I can't give you one thing. Okay. And Casey, if you could speak as loudly as you can, just because I don't know what the microphone came up or not. We use this microphone during the reports, and um, I have this article that it works. Good. Yes. <laughs> so, in case anyone's wondering about the technology, you can use it in the room, and we're sitting pretty far from it, and they say they can hear fairly well. <laughs> Sometimes they do, but yes, it works very good. Um, so, I am the caregiver coordinator, and there are two different um, programs that I work with to help people, um, the National Family Caregiver Support Program and the Alzheimer's Family and Caregiver Support Program. Um, so they're grant programs and with the funding, I can help people with things like respite and um, things they may need in their home to help take care of their they're looking at caring for. I host support groups. And um, over the last year, I've done a lot of uh, talking to people who have been lonely. So a lot of um, just checking in and giving people a space to, to talk about what's going on. I am trying to, I brought some brochures of some of the groups. I didn't bring one for everyone because I am going to change some things. And I'm hoping to start offering some more educational type things. So I can pass this around, but I only have one flyer contains 
called Walk With Ease, and we'll be starting at the end of August. It's a six-week program, and um, we'll meet three times a week for walking and some other educational things to get. So I'm hoping to offer some more of those types of things. And the Walk With Ease program is open to everyone. Yes. Um, so if any, any folks here are interested or think that they might know some folks, we will have more information on our Facebook page, but um, that's actually a, uh, an evidence-based program that's been very successful in lots of counties that have used them, a health program. Um, and again, that's not just for folks, some folks that are in Casey's um, caregiver programs that will hopefully participate, but it will be open to everyone. Um, so if, if Casey has become certified in that, and we're excited to start offering those kinds of in-person programs again. Where are you going? Hey. <laughs> we're going to meet here at um, one of the conference rooms, and then I've been walking some groups to see how long it takes. And so we'll meet here and then do the walking around the little paths in the middle. I know there's a senior center that we use this program that can send to with the senior center. One will be based from here. Okay. And we're going to see how it goes. We're still yes. not having some struggles with getting people coming back to in person type programming. So, this is kind of our first foray into uh, doing one of these programs. I know you've done it on the trail in the past year and the weather. So, this will be outside. So. been there 18 years ago a woman uh during a snowstorm she was 280 and up to the, the floor it looked like an injury stuff out so we have a lot of uh low in the chair yeah and it's a problem on the new healthy people no chair and then it brings right up the gun in there to be there and start in the I was the first one in the room, that's enough to work. But um, you might not know that, or even having to walk along that area. Well, it's good to be back. Meet up yeah. Yeah. there, mm -hmm. up in the community there. You know, for a lot of hard work and talk with my classmates. Great idea. Thank you. Casey, will you just talk about the, um, are all of the caregiver programs the same? Kind of dates or times of the day that you offer them, and then what would it care? What would it, what would it be like if I came to a caregiver program? So the caregiver programs are currently offered here, but um, they used to be offered some we have the Texas Forty Five restaurant, and so we are going to try and offer some different spaces. Um, we'll come to a caregiver program, and there's a time to talk about. Things you're going through. Um, the people there are very amazing caregivers and they support you and help guide you if you need anything. So it's um, a, a space to come and talk about things that you're going through, or you don't have to talk to them. It's just a space to, to be with people that understand what you're going through. There's and also some at the senior center. Yes. And will you talk about the memory cafes and kind of plan for that? Yes. Um, so the memory cafe is not a support group. It is a place where you can come with your peer partner and you can have coffee and chat. And we have a craft if you would like a craft. And um, we have things that we talk about for fun that have to do with that month. It's a place where you can just go in and feel normal with your caregiver and and it's it's a, a nice 
place to just keep them in mind. And where so are those? That is, that is currently at the United Methodist Church. And Leanne is my lovely helper. It hasn't been that many people coming, so if you're interested, we would love to have you. The third Wednesday. Of third Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Do you wear a really nice dress like Vanna? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too short. Uh, <laughs> Too fat. No. <laughs> no. I was just going to mention she was Mark had actually asked for a little update on the dad's program or the dementia adult day services program at the senior center. Oh, yay! And it's like, we can talk about it together. So you actually probably know more. Right. But the reason I bring it up during the caregiver is it's, it's been a great partnership for um, some of the participants of the caregiver program in that they utilize it for respite. Um, you know, they're, they're caring for folks with dementia and they need a break. Um, and so the senior center offers the programs on Mondays and Tuesdays. And I chatted with um, Allie at the senior center today and she said, you know, it's really going well. Dawn is our manager and it's going so well that they hired another staff member for it. And right now they have um, four to five participants on Mondays and Tuesdays. And they are hopefully gonna be up to six shortly because they're waiting for some authorizations from the inclusive program that can help provide some of the funding for that. So it sounds like it's going really, really well. Um, and Casey definitely encourages folks that need that sort of break um, you know, we also sometimes pay for respite care in that person's home, but that's a that can be much more expensive than this program. Plus, it's wonderful for the the, the person who um, has dementia to have a socialization period where they're with others, not just in their home environment all the time. So um, we've been very happy with working with them, and um, it's really exciting to see that. We're really happy that we work so hard to remember mm -hmm. make those payments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's 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 the case is yep. case is the yeah. one who authorizes. I'm Sherry. Sure, yeah. I've talked to you. Yes, we've talked about this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 And one for just the adult day services. Our dementia is Monday and Tuesday. And the regular adult day services is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we have a program five days a week. The dementia one has been phenomenal because, because our people that work with them, they know how to interact with them, they shut the door, they have the music going. They, um, as I said, we have two employees now, so, so some people are more one on one. So, so they, they do crafts with them. They have one person that we have in there was um, a math teacher at Scout, and we have problems, sheets of problems, and he loves to sit there and work on those math problems. He still very grounded in that. So it's like finding their interest and pulling that out still in them and making them feel bad. There's so much of that. It's such so heartwarming to all of us, not only in that those people that work with them, but the rest of the staff. We love them. We go visit them, you know, it's just like a big family. We have so much fun together. So um do you have any other questions about it? Don't worry to ask. What kind of music do you play? Okay, so it's usually more like <clears throat> soft, soothing type of music. Old time music, maybe for the older ones? Um, can be. Yep, or classical. I've read some of them. Very classical. classical. Yeah, usually more, more old time music, but it's very soft and soothing. But not everybody wants that either. Everybody's different. You just have to find out what the people you got that day are interested in. It's all about, I want to say, diverting attention. You know, you, you see.
see like that something looks like a problem is going to arise, somebody's getting upset with somebody else. You just go right in there and, and divert that attention to something that makes them feel good. And really, don't we do that in our whole lives, even with our children? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. I'm so grateful to be a part of that, even though I'm not the director there anymore. I still play a very active role in the city of Treasure. And I hope the city is going to be able to change the support group to the senior center so that it's on a day that that uh, they perfectly needs. So that people, the caregiver can go to the support group and the person with the dementia can go to the foundation. So we did do some time changing around to make sure that it was okay. And we do charge $11 an hour for the dementia program. So Monday and Tuesday, it's $11 an hour. Possible hours from 10 a.m. to 2 30 p.m. We adult day services, which also is a big program there. We have more people involved in that program so far. Um, and that's $7 an hour. There's less one on one. Sometimes. <laughs> Just from experience, Casey and I would both say that's very, very reasonable um, in terms of fees that people would be paying other types of settings, either in home care or other options like that. And the Senior Center is a nonprofit organization, 501c3, so we're not looking to make a profit. We just have to try to keep it. And Casey, so someone, just to be clear, so someone who would um, perhaps be in need of coordinating um, adult day services or the um, dementia Day, dementia day services could potentially receive funding through the caregiver program. Um, there are some criteria for income eligibility and perhaps other age, things like that. But um, so how do they find you? What? How do they get in contact with you? Just call the ARC, right? Or I know you're talking also about us people. or of the general public. Well, the general public, you, all, yeah. all of you as voice voices to the general public. How do you direct people towards those services as you see that need? I think the ADMC is always a great place to start, and Denise can kind of um, tell you then this is who can help you with that. Um, because we can also offer respite in home if the adult day services isn't going to be. Right fit. So you can call me or call the ADRC, um, and I can try to work through these things. So we also try to work with you guys as far yes, as like sure. with our yeah. newsletter. Sure. You know, if you have an insert, you want to put into our newsletter. We do that. Senior Center is awesome. We know the time frame and what we have we to do, do to get our info in, so they're wonderful to work. And, we, and it goes out to about 900 folks a month, a month, or August, July and August is the only time you have two months. Point. Great discussion. Anybody else? Have? You know, everybody out there, every day, they're another day old. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so that. The people we serve are, they're coming. So I'm glad that we've got people that can welcome them in. And I guess the communication is the um, getting out there on the service is offered is really important. Well, we've um, talked about this a little bit before in this group, but I just would reiterate you know, this is an advisory group. So your, um, your actual sort of ability to impact significant change like as a policy is is lesser but what you do have the ability to do is to be our spokespersons for this great work and so as you talk about what you're talking with I mean I still have 
on a re fairly regular occasion where someone's talking to me about a frustration or a, a roadblock, you know, and I'm like, have you called the ADRC? Actually, no matter where I am, even when I'm up north, I'm like, call the ADRC, call your ADRC. Maybe you should call your ADRC. Um, yeah. Someone just told me that they had gone to see their financial advisor and um, the financial advisor was telling everyone that they needed to, that, that they, you know, strongly encouraged them to have their powers of attorney in place. And then this person said, well, and, and he gave me the name of an attorney. And I'm like, oh, you don't have to see an attorney. Call your ADRC and go have them help you through, you know, so saving. I mean, they said they thought that it was going to be like four or $500 to go and have somebody work through filling out their um, power of attorney paperwork. And getting it notarized in your proper condition and that's something the ADRC is able to help with so I have to say the senior center we get called a lot and we forward your number to people that call and ask questions is that are any of them really tall, dark, good looking? Did you just send that personally to my number? Oh <laughs> well, I think all of us know people, particularly as we age, we find our friends and our neighbors, people that are having particular dementia issues and or beginning to have some problems. And I am, I think people are so, they don't want to keep it secret yeah. and they don't want to talk with anybody. And yet sometimes if, if someone is shared with you, I think it's helpful for us to go in with them, or east, or you know, to, let's go with, let's, let's go out and, for lunch and, and then stop it at the ADRC afterwards <laughs> or something, because I I think they need that they're handheld in doing this, and and need a little push sometimes to seek out help. Well, and I think the worst thing is whenever a crisis comes up you know, a real acute situation, a medical situation or whatever that, you know, that you are just desperate and have no time, but then you don't have those resources in place ahead of time to be able to utilize them. A few years ago, the big kind of slogan for ADRC was know us before you use yes. because yeah. unfortunately a lot of times we get contacted just in those crisis yeah. situations. And as with any program, things take time to get in place. You know, there's usually paperwork and that sort of thing. So if people can know us and get that sort of stuff, that groundwork laid before they actually need us desperately, need the services yeah. desperately, that's always the best way to do it. Well, and um, without divulging um, confidential information, um, Tracy's group had an incident this week where um, someone contacted the ADRC about their adult child in need of services and turned out that that person was also a caregiver for a spouse and is what well, but had not made the connection that perhaps they could have resource to help with their needs with regard to their spouse so um, yeah. well I think I'm gonna get your number Put it on the refrigerator and tell my wife. She probably is already back. Okay. Yeah, it is probably. At least I got a driver's license. <laughs> Well, there's a thing when, when people uh, talk about a crisis, when, mm -hmm. when they can no longer have their driver's license. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of experiences with that. And uh, one of these old guys can't drive, and it's, it's tough. It's Absolutely. It's a very, very tough transition and loss of independence for sure. Yeah. I have uh, in our family uh, one of the elderly uh, people. And had an accident and she was driving around, didn't want to give up her license. And one of her children went behind her back, talked to the doctor, and uh, he had her license. I think my mother never, I can't blame him. Yeah. He never forgave my sister who did that to her. And 
I would say it's like Easter, but I think that's ordering on abuse, elderly abuse. They're sitting right now in this church. Okay, we, we need to talk about this. We need to. So, um, you know, my mother never forgave her for doing that. In the state of Wisconsin, you can report somebody um, for a driver's license issue on confidentiality, confidentiality. So, and someone, and I think people sometimes need to report to that and, and have them. So that's them. the avenue for them to report it to the, the Department of Human Vehicles. I wonder if that's something that should be in the And um, you, you might want to get the statute written now so that it's, it's written out because you can report people without it being a there's no young woman who reports. And I think sometimes that can happen. But what is the follow up? It's with what? That? what? What is the follow up well, when the, that happens? The Department of Motor Vehicles would probably bring them in. I don't know. Okay. They, did, they contact the doctor. Yeah. And have the doctor do what I'm not sure exactly how it works. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll look into that a little bit and see if we can find info and maybe have it come by next week. Um, Tracy, are we going to move the next item on uh, community health workers? I guess we've already talked to some of them. No more questions for Casey. She's got to excuse herself when her when her piece is done. So, thanks, Casey. Um, so, the community health worker, that's something we've talked about at least the last time, maybe the last two times, where we received the grant for the community health worker position. And our position, and we were one of four counties in Wisconsin to get this grant. Our position, um, we met Alita, our community health worker who accepted that position. She just had her baby, so she's she's took a very short maternity leave and is kind of on a modified return to work schedule where she's working from home again. But um, I think that it's going very well. Um, we are making inroads with restarting our mom friendship group, which was a great group, very um, vital prior to the pandemic, but unfortunately kind of fell apart during COVID because um, it wasn't really a group that was conducive to meeting virtually and that didn't work at all for that. So the board of the, the Mom Friendship Group is meeting again and they're going to be starting to do outreach to our former participants and then also outreach to new participants. Alita has done a lot of work with um, connecting with the Mung Mutual Association in Eau Claire, which does serve gun companies, which a lot of people I don't think know it's actually a regional organization, to try to um, pair with them as much as possible so we're not duplicating services and maybe so that we can work in partnership together. Um, we just found out, we just got approval from the folks at the state who are overseeing the grant that we can provide some gas vouchers as an incentive for folks if we try to do some group meetings in Eau Claire, but the gas prices are a challenge for folks right now to be traveling. So we're gonna be able to provide some quick trip vouchers through that grant um, to be able to get people over there. They already have some good support groups meeting and we thought perhaps rather than reinventing the wheel, it might be a good thing to work in partnership and the Mung Mutual Association is also interested in possibly having some of that here in Dunn County. So that's been very fruitful. Um, Lita kind of is just back from her maternity leave last week. So she's just kind of getting her feet back in the saddle again, but that's really where she's, where her attention has been spent. Um, overall, we've had several meetings with the grant, um, the folks that, at the state level who are overseeing the grant and they're very happy with our progress. They kind of know um, there might be, uh, it might take a little bit longer for Alita to build up trust with folks that she doesn't know in the community yet, um, but I think she's a great person to be with. So um, I think that the, it's going very well, and she's got a lot of really neat ideas. Um, she plans to really do some outreach to our local hospital social workers to connect with them. If they see folks that are discharging from the hospital, that might mean a little bit more follow-up than the hospital can provide um, to refer to Alita to do some of the just checking in type of stuff with them, not necessarily anything medical, but just um, seeing if they need help connecting with resources and that sort of thing. So um, I think we've got some
really good partnerships developing, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Yes, she's already had some meetings with them and that and has offered services to them. Now that she's back from, she kind of was doing some, I don't know if you'd call it pre-work where she was introducing herself, but kind of saying, I'm going to be on a maternity leave, so I'll reach out again once I'm back. Um, just to go on it so that both know that she's kind of back in, in the office again and ready for connection. So, so what's your name again? Alita Yang is her name. And does she, how many hours will she she's work? She's full time. Okay. And Tracy, will you just revisit sort of the concept behind a community so health community worker? Community health worker is, it's a, I don't know if it's a new concept, it's new to us here in Dunn County probably, but um, it really grows out of a lot of hospital work. Um, community health workers are meant to be folks who have lived experience in um, navigating systems within a community. And I, a lot of hospital systems in um, Madison area and Milwaukee area have actually used community health workers for quite some time in which they're using those folks to help those that the hospital might identify as being at risk for struggling with following their follow-up, uh, you know, instructions, struggling with getting services, and the hospital just doesn't have the resources to provide that kind of thing. So the community health worker's role in those settings is kind of to provide outreach and to really do some hand-holding for folks to try to get them to um, be able to access any sort of resources that they need to really help. So now the state, the um, ADRCs at the state level received this grant through COVID funding. So we, we do have to kind of tie everything that Alita is doing, uh, not everything, but some things to uh, COVID outreach uh, information. She can provide information to folks in the community about when the next COVID clinics are, those sorts of things. Um, but that's, the state seems very, very interested in expanding this model and this is just a very initial very small pilot project community health workers are not necessarily folks that have to have a college degree at all um, some of the trainings that i've gone to have talked about um, you know they have folks that are working as community health workers that don't even have that don't have high school diplomas but they have a lot of experience in accessing or um, being able to help people navigate systems within their community. Um, so the, the lived experience piece is very, very important. Alita does have a college degree. She, she had, she's a certified social worker and has a degree, but that wasn't something that we required in the, in the hiring process at all. Um, so it's a, it, it's a little bit of a different model um, than what we might be used to in the human services world, but I think that there's probably going to be an opportunity for growth in this area, maybe not just in the ADRC, but maybe other avenues, other areas of human services as well. So, so we're excited to be part of this little little project that might that might develop into something more. Super cool. Any other questions for Tracy or? Well, networking just seems to be the big topic, doesn't it? I'm wondering if somebody getting information off. Uh, and I can tell you another one that is, uh, uh, I don't know where the one, there was a, there was a program at University Extension that called Farmers Night Out, and it was canceled because of COVID or something like that. I can't remember. I think the money came from Farm Bureau, which has the stand at the county fair and other organizations. And what they did uh, was just a simple, uh, they had 75 free passes for people that might enjoy going to the Dunn County Fair. And I'm on the Dunn County Fair board, so I'll just keep <laughs> But I mean, you know, they, uh, they have one left. I mean, the first one, you know, the first 75 were snapped right up. And the idea was, if you know somebody that really needs to have a good day, Give them this pass and say, have a good time with her. And I guarantee you'll have a good time with her. <laughs> and uh, I talked to our, poor Chris has to listen to me. I talked to our, our former uh, county manager 
after the fair was over last year, uh, he had never been very supportive of, of some of the requests that, that, that the fair had made. And uh, so I spoke to him about the downtown fair. I said, I don't know where you can go and sit on a boot, sit on a chair, um, park bench, and listen to the memories do a concert, the band, the memories. Uh, you're right next to uh, the food court where you can have, indulge in just about anything you want to do. The building next to you has uh, arts and crafts and senior citizen stuff. And over the top of the building is the black smoke from the tractor pull, and you can hear those engines <laughs> roaring. So, I mean, you know, what are you interested in? The memories? Tractor pull, good food, what's going on in the community with crafts and stuff. Or the cow barn. And what? The cow barn. The cow. <laughs> See, I use the same, I use, I'll give you the same phrase that I used uh, at a county board meeting that went to the paper. I says, we received money to install big ass fans. <laughs> In the, fair. the name of the company is Big Ass. <laughs> and uh, it's part of our for funds. Uh, it can be in a dairy barn or the, all the livestock carts in the ceiling. And, it's, and they, they are these long 16 foot blades. You know, just sit up there. And I have three of them. And uh, circulates the air. And uh, because before, you know, there was ground fans. Mm -hmm. I've been a kid and they're just, you know, kids kind of do the same thing, you know, now as they did, you know, 60 years ago. You know, if somebody's got a fan there, pick a little dirt. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> well, I think it was a bad thing. <laughs> just, you know, that's how I got into government. <laughs> well, yeah, then there's the wash racks. And uh, if there's somebody, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so my sisters didn't do half the things that I did. So. Larry, question. Yes. How about getting some of those things off of the market? I haven't seen them much. Of them. I don't know uh, either, and I don't know how who was coordinating that. University Extension, you know, has lots of outreach, you know, with 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 Hmong folks, and uh, you know. We keep saying mug folks and talk goofy like that. Well, I mean, you know, how long ago was it when it was people Swedes were just coming to the fair? I mean, there's those Norwegians over there to the Atlantic. No. You know, and I, so I mean, hey, there are melting pot things all over, and there are activities for Swedes and Norwegians and the Polish. And the Hmong yeah, and everybody church. else, and oh, and it, well, it, uh, they were slow to come in, but it, so they came in real strong. So I mean, you, you go you go down uh, the building where the hockey rink is, and uh, you see the arts and crafts and uh, the photography program, which is one of the biggest ones, and uh, all the county clubs uh, uh, are always looking for members. And, uh, so um, there's a lot of stuff going on. So, I mean, thinking of what we're talking about here today, you know, providing, you know, pass to the fair for 75 people that may not go or really need to have a fun day, you know, or two. Uh, it's all kinds of little stuff going on. So, got to get the word out. Okay. Where are we at? Oh. Anything else that we need to do? Or? Can I tell you a story yeah. about my father? His family, he came from a family of 14. Where yeah. They all spoke German and he had to learn English before he went to school. And we tried to get him to speak up there. And he finally admitted, I think it was one of the extra folks that not done, because of the two world wars. Uh, there was so much hatred in German, and a lot of them were tied to the fact that they were German. And of course, 
in life and having talked with these teachers, it was sort of all blend in with their own families and so he re he refused to teach us and they were careful about teaching German back then. And then he prayed for the German. Well, they sure make good sauce. But I am half Norwegian. You know, okay. Good grief. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Well, I'm looking at this number. We yep. Consideration of actions we think about really fun. I mean, we, we don't really take any action, do we? Sometimes you do. So sometimes, like for instance, you um, you approve the e the aging plan when we do the aging plan um, at the um, in collaboration with the transportation coordinating committee. We look at the eighty five point one transportation plan. Um, we have you've made recommendations sometimes in the past regarding the meal sites mm -hmm. um, and moving them, changing them, things like that. So yeah, there are some actions sometimes. Well, we approved two resolutions on Sunday last November 8th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a question. I was with a group of women two days ago, and we got talking about the shortage of um, affordable housing for older people who want to be independent. And I'm wondering what, whether there's any possibly pressing that or whether, whether this group has any role in pushing for more, more housing options. Well, the lady that runs the, the Dunn County uh, housing program, you know, all that I think there's also a Menominee housing program in the area. But I mean, here's the real life that's been happening. I mean, up, up by me and Al Clown, they're doing a lot of uh, uh, housing, you know. On Highway 12, going through the Bill Clark County line, and of course these are new facilities and higher prices for rent. And what has happened is that the existing housing that would be low income or low, I don't know. All I know is that the existing housing people are getting a, a, a jump in their rent because of the new facilities that are coming in. So I, I you know, that's something I've never had to deal with. But something I, that somebody that you could talk about at some point in terms of nominee or so I, I guess I would have a suggestion. So Dunn County has curtain currently um, is engaged in uh, the services of West Central Regional Planning to do an actual Dunn County housing study. And it's across the board uh, looking at just kind of all facets of housing, um, future need, current need. Um, that population uh, in the population out the number of low income, the middle and middle income. So there's the housing is just getting launched. Um, we're just finalizing a survey um, that will be related to that. And so I certainly will. Um, we will certainly engage you in completing the survey for one thing. But um, if that is an area that so I think one of the things that that is a struggle is housing is one of those things that doesn't sort of land anywhere. It's got little pockets of, of things that happen with the housing authorities, with the homeless shelters, but there's like no one coordinating area or entity. Um, but part of the goal of the housing study is to provide the county with some, um, some starting points of trying to make a difference with regard to housing in Dunn County because it is very, very tight. And you're right, there is literally no options available for folks who are looking to transition into um, maybe out of a family-sized home and into a smaller setting um, and um, and still, you know, be able to remain not in a congregate kind of a living situation. Um, so what I guess I would suggest is one, we'll make sure to get that survey out to you so that you can um, provide your feedback with regard to that. 
But I will also um, talk with that coordinator. Perhaps the timing would correspond with her coming actually to a meeting and gathering your input as a group. I just recently applied for a CBD and I was very aware of it. I just want to go for C CBD G grant, minty uh, black grant. And I live in Town Manani, which I, nobody knew that townships were eligible for these grants. Mm -hmm. And it's administered through the Triple County. They cover Triple and Dunn counties. Um, relatively easy. But you know, I'm going to be putting a well. So they're going to keep coming and rebuilding their windows. West Cap already did the installation. Um, unbeknownst to me, I got two furnaces. First one didn't work out, so I did the second one. In. But, you know, a lot of people don't really know about these organizations out there. And that's one thing that bothers me is the, the lack of communication. Facebook can only do so much. And the people that we're trying to hit are not on Facebook. So it's got to be pen and paper and mail. And that's something that newsletters and things like that. Um, just recently saw that uh, West Cap is doing a badger box. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but it's a box of food. Anybody is eligible up to a single individual, $24,000. And I called and I said, am I eligible that I live in, as I said, Boyceville and Clemson School District? And I said, yeah, we sort of screwed up on the wording now. But, you know, is that something that we can get into this area? Sure. Sure. You know, I know Stepping Stones is overburdened. The churches don't have a lot of cooperation with their parishioners and that. And a lot of people, I don't like to go to the food camp. Why are you going to the food camp? You're getting disability. Disability only gives so much. It is one of, definitely, I know that it's on the, the county board's uh, sort of radar as well. It's very difficult to disseminate information because we don't we don't have a super active newspaper. I mean, a newspaper meets a small portion of the population. Facebook meets a portion of the population. Um, you're right. One uh, some organizations are going back to direct mail, but it's a very expensive yeah. option. Well, um, if you're like me, I throw away any junk mail. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very difficult to find that. You know, people don't necessarily watch television or, or have a cable connection. They don't listen to the radio. Or they, they listen to the cable network for downtown either. Right. You know, yeah. Four seven tried it. So it's really a challenge to get information out. Um, and um, I know it's one of the things that the board is interested to because there is a lot of great stuff that happens. And I, I'm hardly ever in a meeting that somebody doesn't say, "I didn't know that we did that. I didn't know that happened here." Um, myself included. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Housing too. I was homeless for a year, and I went. Was it finally eligible for the housing at Hosford Ridge? Yep. And I went through there, and I'm like, you know, that's what respect. What because, is, because of the expense of the smallness. The oh. well, you're going to have to get rid of all your stuff because we don't allow this, 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 this in here. I get a dog support dog. Well, you why you chose not to go well, that was another problem. It would have cost me $850 plus utilities. I bought a house for $39,000 right on the Red Cedar River. So there's houses out there. And there's, there's homes that are the yeah. yeah. You know, everything, I can pay two months mortgage for what it would have cost for one month. Sure. Right. Another issue with Hosford Bridge. It was originally designed for LJL It was built in the 70s. And one of the, I've been there for about 18 years. So I've seen a lot and a lot about the situation. And Rebecca, the, the executive director of Monopoly Office, and they own a lot of land for family and for single. And, um, when they, they, they started letting the disabled come in, and I know uh, so most of these people are gone now, but we're older and dying, but they had a real issue with that. Uh, the disabled people coming in, and they did have a lot of problems. They were given a sick brain and um, all kinds of disabilities. And I do not feel safe. I will not go out in my hallway at night. Um, 
So, I mean, that's another thing. You know, I think that's just very offended us. But yeah, it was just been very uncomfortable. We used to have a real community and we would meet regularly and have potluck. None of that. Well, I guess we have a room for wine and coffee. Um, but some of us don't work that way. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's been a real uh, issue. And it's just a tiny apartment. Mm -hmm. I mean, and most people have to preserve, and I do, I have to share some of my stuff and put some of these stories. And I'm sure there's some stuff to tell that. Well, I'm looking forward to the survey. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think that, I think the survey. And how it's distributed, distributed makes a difference too. You know, how, what group is it going to go out to, and and how are they going to to get this out? Because I think mean, we can deal, you know, with fill it out, but we're just a small, yes. <laughs> little group. And uh, I mean, I, I think people trying to move in, like someone lost their driver's license and can't find uh, housing in Menominee now. And is trying to find the housing, or you know, I think that's an that's an issue that has been for having a having a, and also people with dementia trying to find when they're trying to make the transition to something that is a safe place for them, they're up on a waiting list, yeah. and 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 so we've got we've got some issues, Absolutely. <laughs> and I think that we need to address them. I think it would be very helpful. Another issue I have. Uh, it's when I was trying to vote for the Mitchell, and I vote regularly. I for uh, my uh, driver's license got expired, and the way I was treated was not good. Mm -hmm. I was really, it's no wonder. Uh, I don't know how to vote. Yeah, the way you treated me, too, if you looked at three and so three, you could make a file, a card showing that. And I remember, I, yeah, I, I left very angry. So yeah, until I got my driver's license. A lot of people don't have driver's license for an ID. Right? Where do you get from if you're a vet? And what else? Um, how do you get an ID? Without the scan? So that would be a key with me, too, in the way I was treated. I had no wonder I was given a larger city, even lower income than me. Protection. Maybe that might be something to talk about at the next meeting with elections coming up. Yeah, what what uh, um, uh, what, what health care what health care is going to be for maybe what things are helping people to vote to make of their voters. Um, they have and I only know this because I get um the media program under the income news. Not telling you news is to be a little bit more stories and there's a goal. Mm -hmm. But not really more. There are hardly any local. Yeah, the readership is so small. In there, like, mm -hmm. Copex so Messenger. It's hard, it's hard to. Well, Copex Messenger, was going to take more expense. And publishing, it was the village meeting. And mm -hmm. uh, their readership went from 14,000. That's not the main thing. Because yeah. it's not a big revenue on the management, but yeah. people just don't Yeah, want and if you yeah, complain about it, but you have to own it. Sherry, did you have something you want to say? Um, I was just going to <clears throat> make mention that, uh, like dancing yeah. ropes, that's perfect. Dancing ropes is also, um, it's like a community. Dancing ropes is like a community mm -hmm. of people, and it's, um, I know that the Lens of Space has a link. So that might be a resource for you to pursue with your dancing oats. Dancing oats is by, right up by the fairgrounds. Oh, I know. Like, you know where you go. Instead of going down to the fairgrounds, you're going to turn and go up that hill. And then that, um, they're actually building new in there all the time. But I, I bet, geez, I'll bet at least. Ten people that I know that are members of the singing section live there, and it's like a community. They have got lots. They, you know, they just love living there, and that goes according to the income. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Oh, I have a head full of all the things I've learned. I really appreciate my point of view of helping to lead this committee and, and uh, work as a two. And uh, I'm confident moving forward with administration and uh, cover issues that maybe people haven't covered before. I just need to speak up and, and uh, say what's on my mind. And sometimes things happen fast, and sometimes things happen too slowly. But you know, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it's never spoken, if it's never come out, uh, change, things won't change. So, uh, Johnny Ward faces a lot of issues that that uh, sometimes I think, uh, well, anyway, I, I don't, I don't know what, how much thought. I mean, I, I got on a computer every other day, and uh, I'm always surprised when my wife posts something, somebody, whatever, you know, comments on it, and. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, people get their news and information uh, many different ways. And, you know, I will school the fact that I wait for the third leader and the, the COPEX messenger, and then I kind of know what's going on. She, she, I guess so. <laughs> okay, anything else, somebody? Well, then I think I'll just call for the adjournment of the meeting and thank everybody for coming. And uh, uh, welcome, Paula. Congratulations, Christine. And uh, we'll be back here in September. Yeah. And we have the nutrition people. So. And Chris, thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you. Um, thank you.